When you were raised with childhood emotional neglect, it basically perseverates everything in your life. And it also goes with you when you get into a relationship with someone. The problem with childhood emotional neglect is the affected person doesn't always know they're affected. Like you may get with somebody and really love this person, really just feel so lucky you're with this person, but yet you're really never happy with them. And you can't quite pinpoint it because it's like, you know, I know I, I'm, I'm responding in a way I shouldn't be responding, but I have no idea why. Sometimes your partner's stump, really stumped too because they're like, you know, I'm trying to do the best I can, but, and compared to my friends, I feel like I'm giving you more than they give their partner, but you just never seem happy or you never seem connected or whatever the issue may be. There's three primary things that I see in relationships that go back to childhood emotional neglect. And if you see these patterns in your relationship, it might be a good idea for you to talk to a therapist. If the two of you want to go to therapy, it will be enlightening for you, especially since probably the therapist will be able to bring out the exact incidences that happened in your childhood. And it would be good to be able to share that with a person, especially a supportive partner who is consistent and committed. But even if your partner isn't excited about going to therapy, you really should go anyway, because you will be able to finally lay these feelings you have to rest and know that they don't have to be dragged into every relationship. Like they don't belong to your partner. They really don't belong to you. They belong to what happened to you that you probably had very little control over. The first of these is just a deep sense of loneliness. Couples usually feel supported and connected with each other. Everybody has some loneliness, but they don't feel disconnected from their partner. If you grew up with childhood emotional neglect, you feel disconnected a lot of the time. You feel like you really can't break through something with your partner. There's something inside of you that you can't quite connect or, or get at with them. I have some signs that may show up in a relationship. The first one, you don't feel like your partner and you are a teammate or a team, like a real team. Number two, you feel alone when you're around your partner. Number three, you feel like your partner doesn't really know you. These signs are indicative of being like in a child, as a child or in a family, that was neglectful emotionally. The kids grow up with this as an inner, like an inner feeling, an inner sense that they can't quite get to. The second one is the need to have surface type communication. You know, being vulnerable, if you're in a family of childhood emotional neglect, is really, really scary because when you were vulnerable, you probably were too young to really even remember, you were shut down or your parents might have said, stop that. They were uncomfortable with it and they were uncomfortable with it because they were neglectful of your emotions, of your feelings. So more than likely you learn to stuff those. And if you stuff a feeling long enough, pretty soon you will just stay on the surface because it's easier it feels more comfortable. And when your relationship communication stays on the surface, it might seem easier. Like we get along so good, but nothing of essence is really being discussed. So the signs of this, talking about feelings is very difficult for you. Um, you may have trouble anticipating what your partner is feeling. Like you can't see the cues of what you said how it would affect them. Secondly, if emotions do come up, you tend to ignore or discount them. Or there may be a blow up because once again, what your, what your parents did set a pattern in your brain and it will come back. 
And so this is how you deal with conversation when it's real. Number three, you don't know what to talk about. Perhaps you go out to dinner expecting to feel romantic or intimate, and then you find out you just feel kind of awkward. You feel awkward because this was never explored when you were young because it, you had to stuff to survive in that relationship with your family. Um, you may even blame yourself when your expectations aren't met and believing something's wrong with your relationship. Again, it's probably not the relationship. It's probably your partner doesn't know how to respond to what you're responding to, which are these old tapes you grew up with. Emotional words are limited in your conversations. Uh, for example, words like you'll, you'll kind of go along with um, happy, sad, frustrated, not so much. Um, embarrassed, you won't say that. Anything that has a vulnerability attached to it, you're not, you're going to stay away from because that would be very uncomfortable and it would feel very awkward. Um, the third one is conflict avoidance. I meet couples all the time and I'm going to tell you up front, if you never fight or you've never argued with your partner, there is a serious problem. One of you had emotional neglect in their childhood. I would almost bet on it. And the reason is because when you grow up in this kind of family, you're going to get one of two responses. You're going to get ignored or you're going to get blow ups. And any child will tell you blow ups are the worst. And you carry that fear with you. So basically it helps if you, if you get the feeling like, okay, this feels familiar. Somebody's mad. You're going to shut that down. So conflicts are not allowed. Any kind of conflict, you will flee the situation or whatever you did as a child. Some kids got right into it and you'll see that carry through as an adult. The signs of this, when you do notice feelings, you keep it to yourself for fear that it will negatively affect your partner. You hate conflict. You hate arguments. So you sweep these things under the rug. Like you're like, I don't want to do this. For example, you might be the kind of person you can't stand to see any violence on TV. More than likely there was emotional neglect in your family. And I want to remind you, emotional neglect is not physical neglect. Those parents might have been with you all the time, even hovering over you. It's just that they did not deal with feelings at all. They were uncomfortable from their family of origin and they gave that to you. They didn't know how to cope with what they were feeling. You or your partner utilize the silent treatment or stonewalling when you get upset and you have important unresolved grievances with your partner that probably will never get worked out unless you go to therapy and you start unpacking this emotional neglect. What to do? You need to come to terms with what's going on. You need to be honest and say, you know what? I, I've been watching, I've been journaling. I think my family was emotionally neglectful. I think they were great parents, but they just had no idea how to deal with emotions. And so they stuffed theirs and I was a recipient of a blowout or days they would ignore me. And any other emotion I had, they were totally neglectful. That is reasonable. And when you come to those terms, now you're at a prime opportunity to do something about that. Number two, don't resort to blaming. You can't blame anybody else, including yourself. You have to say, you know what? I finally, I had a eureka moment. I got it. And now I'm going to make a plan. And lastly, childhood emotional neglect is not incurable. It is very curable. And you don't have to go through and, you know, feel bad about your parenting, about the way you were raised. You can enlighten them. But first get enlightened by yourself because once your parents see that, my God, they're going to therapy and they're getting so much better at expressing themselves, you may express yourself in a way that they can't handle and they may not like that. But at the same time, you'll know this is an opportunity for them. They, you're giving your parents the greatest gift of all. You're saying, 
I was raised in a way that could severely, has severely limited me from expressing my emotions and feeling them, which is detrimental. It's part of being a human and I am fixing it. I am working on it. And now I'm giving you the gift of, as I work on it, you can see the skills I'm doing and maybe you'll want to add that to your life. They may think you're crazy. So what? Do it anyway, because everybody I know deserves to feel and think and express what they're feeling inside. It is our greatest gift as humans. And in relationships, you cannot exist without emotional awareness and an ability to know, to feel, to express what you're feeling. And if going to therapy is going to help you do that, good for you. Go.